Uh, hello, so I have been out for a while, and also though I have been back for a while, I recently uh, just came from backpacking in India for almost three months. I was there for two and a half months, and I spent most of my time in the north side. So I didn't, I wasn't able to go down to uh, Mumbai, for example. And I think the 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 furthest south I was was just in Rajasthan. I was in um, I was in Mount Abu. Uh, and I think that might be the as further south I was, uh, I stayed at, or maybe, I don't know, like, I, I wasn't really much, I was in Rajasthan for a bit, and then I was mostly in Delhi area, then I went around Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, well, I passed through to Varanasi, and to, um, Budgaya, I was also in Kolkata for a bit, and then I went up into the, um, the Himalayas, I went to uh, Dharamshala, and I also went to, uh, to Punjab and Amritsar, and I realized that as, as if you don't, if you don't know anything about Indian geography, this doesn't mean that much to you. But uh, anyway, I have been out for a while. But um, in around two or three weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago or so, I came back, uh, and I've mostly been resting, reading. Uh, right now, um, I just I forgot. I almost forgot actually that I have this whole thing, and I thought oh, maybe I'll give me a bit of an update. I just finished um, the Gay Science recently, Nietzsche, um, which was. Uh, which I, I've been reading on and off for the past uh, couple of months, and I really enjoy that book. Um, what else did I read recently? I've read, I've read a couple of books. I, um, let's see. I read this um, biography of a Tibetan saint of sorts um, called The Life of Milarepa. I read it because I bought the book when I was in Dharamshala, which is where the Dalai Lama escaped to um, in the um, a couple, like 50, 60 years ago. He escaped uh, to Dharamshala, which is in north, uh, west, northwestern uh, India from Tibet. Um, and if you don't know the story about that, um, you know, it's like a whole big issue. Um, and obviously the Dalai Lama is quite popular right now. Uh, I haven't read his, well, I, I listened to one of his, I listened to an audiobook of his, which was about, um, I forgot what it was called, but it was kind of about this idea of the unity of religions being that of compassion. That was one of the, at least one of the topics he kind of talks about in the book. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I was there in, in this, in this area where many, ha maybe half or so of the people who were living there were Tibetan, Tibetan refugees, or most of them who had kind of escaped Tibet to live in India to practice their religion. Because if, you know, the idea is that in, um, in Tibet, it's not very safe or not very, it's, it's not a good place for you to practice Tibetan Buddhism because China's trying to be overly atheist. Or, well, not overly, but what I mean is that you're trying to make the whole country atheist. So you don't necessarily want, um people to be practicing religion so outwardly like the Tibetans do with Tibetan Buddhism so they uh, curtail that uh, in Tibet so they want to practice it freely so they do so in India at least in Dharamshala uh, or primarily Makhlayot Ganj is where many of them are where you have the Dalai Lama's temple there and you also have um, uh, I guess the Karmapa lives somewhere there and you have like the Tibet the Tibetan library where they have many of their sacred texts kind of hidden over there and many it's a cool place i visited there as well um overall my trip in india was that of i was there originally to visit a friend and, and when i finally got there and when my friend left i thought i wanted to kind of explore the more religious side of india because of india being such a you know a, a, a hub for major world religions so one of the first things i did for example is i wanted to go to the places in india that i found were supposed to be the most the holy supposedly um, so I went to uh, Varanasi, which is they call the holiest city in India by the Ganges River. I also went up to Rishikesh, which is also one of the one of the cities that, that the Ganges or Mother Ganga, as they call it, passes through. Um, you have a couple of them: here, Rishikesh, Haridwar, um, Allahabad, Varanasi. And when I was there, they had the um, Kumbh Mela, which is the Allahabad, um, which is like the world's largest gathering of human beings in one spot, which was at Allahabad. I guess they call it Prayagraj now. Um, again, if you don't know anything about India, I'm just rambling. Uh, but I went to um, Varanasi, which is like the whole a Hindu holy spot. I also went to Mathura and Vrindavan, which are other holy spots. I went there for Holi, the festival, H-O-L-I, the one where they throw colors at each other. Uh, I went to Amritsar, which is the holy, most holy place for the Sikh religion, for Sikhism, which I didn't know too much about before going to India and visiting there. But it's like the fourth or fifth largest world religion in the world world religion in the world um very redundant but it's a it's a major religion in the world and it's uh it's interesting i learned a lot about it i went to them so they have the golden temple in amritsar just where they believe though uh the final guru long story short sikhism has this um tradition in which they have these certain gurus who uh there were 10 gurus and then 10 or 
nine or ten gurus, and then each guru would kind of be will pass on. After a guru dies, there'll be a new guru, blah, 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 all the way for a couple of hundred years, up to the point where the final guru, it might have been a ninth or tenth guru, finally said that the that there will be no more successors to me, the final guru will actually be, will, the final guru will be the book itself. And he compiles the writings of the previous nine or ten gurus, as long as well as some other, um, there's some Sufi writings in there as well, and some other writings, and he he compiles this book, which is called the Adi Granth, or, well, which is also called the, more popularly known as the Guru Granth Sahib, uh, which is their holy book, and they believe the holy book is also the Guru, or the the holy, like the, whatever, the Guru of the religion, the, the person, the, the person, the uh, entity of the high, who has the highest, um, the entity with the highest uh, religion, with the highest kind of, uh, I don't know how to explain it, whatever, it's the highest of the religion, highest entity is, the guru uh well technically it's it's a god but the guru is kind of the you know what remains on this earth or whatever happening it's, it's an interesting religion i learned a lot about it. i spoke to many sick people most of them are punjabis uh, i met some i met an american sick as well um so i went there uh, when i was in delhi i went to different temples around many hindu temples a uh, very beautiful look like the akshardam for example which was a, uh, which is a temple of, uh, the thing with hinduism is every temple is dedicated to different gods and some of them are not dedicated to God, some of them are dedicated to kind of these holy men uh, who are so supposed to be like reincarnations of certain gods. So in Akshardham in India, in, in, in Delhi, I mean, uh, they have uh, a whole beautiful temple built around 10, 11 years ago, dedicated to this holy man named uh, Swami Narayan, I think. Uh, so that's his temple. It's very, it's, one of the, it's probably the most intricately, um, intricate temple I saw in India. I went around, I saw some Jain temples in Rajasthan, uh, Jainism is another religion which I which is hard to kind of condense really but uh, one, of the, one of the interesting things about Jainism is that they believe utmost sanctity of living things so you for example they have this thing where they uh, when they walk around for example they walk they walk they try not to step they walk very carefully because they try not to step in any insects it's very important for their religion that they don't kill any animals although you know I would contend that it's hard to kind of assert what living even means especially when you think of like um, you know, plants, um, and stuff like that, but, uh, that's how, that's what they're, that's what they kind of live on. Jainism is, they have such beautiful temples as well, um, more, usually white marble, uh, also they kind of wear white around. There's also in Delhi, there's this thing called the Lotus Temple, which has the Baha'i religion is kind of situated, situated there, at least in, much of the whole of India, but at least in Delhi, the Baha'i Temple, very beautiful thing called the Lotus Temple, where the temple looks like a lotus a flower, which is quite sacred in many Eastern traditions. Uh, Baha'i is an interesting religion as well, um, and uh, along with Sikhism, it believes in a kind of teleological linearity with uh, monotheistic religions. So you have Judaism, Christianity, Islam, uh, the Sikhs believe they're you know part of the next in line, and then you kind of have uh, the you know it kind of for so Baha'i believes that they're like the final the final iteration of this kind of teleological linear you know uh, path of sorts that the monothe that monotheism, monotheism has kind of developed over time. They believe that they're the last ones and the last this is Bahu um was this Bahu Allah I think is the name of their prophet. I learned about uh, that and of course I you know I went to Bodhgaya so I learned a bit more about Buddhism over there and Bodhgaya is a place where supposedly the Buddha or um, Siddhartha Gautama got enlightened under the Bodhi tree and the Bodhi tree itself you can kind of visit and there are many people around mostly monks from different denominations of Buddhism people from Tibet Japan China um, Nepal Sri Lanka I could hear the languages around me Thailand uh, it was very it's a very nice place to be and very peaceful. Uh, so let's see, what I'm at Tsar, where else did I go? I went up, so, and yeah, so mostly I was doing some stuff like that, apart from other random things I was going to, like, um, you know, part of me enjoying being in Varanasi was because I'm a big fan of, say, you know, the Indian classical music. Like I went I went to a couple of concerts where you have, like, these, uh, at the back of the, like, the room where they perform, they have, like, a framed image of, for example, of uh, Ravi Shankar, because Ravi Shankar is actually from Varanasi. And also, one of some of my favorite movies are filmed. One of my favorite movies, one of my favorite movie series has a big. Uh, one of my favorite movie series, the Apu trilogy, which was directed by Satyajit Ray, um, who's from Kolkata. He uh, one of the most. Um, well, the second film is mostly um, 
shot at very nice view, so that was also nice to be around that kind of area. Um, yeah, I mean that that's more of what I was doing. I don't. Um, I guess I could go into more detail. I could talk or make other videos about gay science or about. I've been reading the pl uh, pl platonic dialogues lately. I read uh, for the Eurythiphes. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but the I read the Order of the Four that um, chronicles Plato's um, death. So through Apology, so Crito Apology, was it Cre Apology Crito, uh, and then I read the Phaedo, and the first I forgot the name of the first one. Tied with an E, but I I read those ones recently. What else have I been reading recently? I'm mean, looking back because like some, like the books I finished, I kind of just throw some over there, but I I've been reading other things as well. So yeah, that's um that's what have been happening for the past few months with me. Um and yeah. <laughs>